Off The Cuff Radio, episode 387, alongside T-Max with the facts. Jill, we here on a Sunday, and we about to get it rolling and rocking. We about to do it. Shout out to our co-hosts and spirit, a lot of Sandman, Lady Chinchilla, our sponsors, Core Financial, Jesse's Boutique, Buddy Boy Entertainment, and Dirty Basement Radio, along with King Air Productions and Da Vinci Clothing, and we are back. And I'm back again. Yes, indeed, man. And we got a special guest on the line tonight, man. This man here held it down for Pimp C and his legacy. He's straight rider for the core, man, a real solid guy. We had him on the show before, and he's coming back to tell us about new music he got going on, possible new documentary. The YouTube channel he got is popping. So without further ado, let's all welcome the big homie, 17 the Hog, y'all. Yeah. What's going on with it? What's, What's good, my brother? You, Let me ask you something, man. What is that shit? What's up? Y'all were just playing in my ear on that phone, man. Who was that? What song oh, was that? Oh, that was the Pimp C of uh, Deep in the Game joint. No, no, that wasn't my big bro. It was a devil. It's a song came on after that. What was that shit? The other one that had uh, with Juicy J and Nas and Pimp. Maybe Pimp so. Pimp. I don't know. That shit was boo boo, man. That shit was garbage. It's it might have been it might have been if it's one that they did. After Big Bro passed away, that's some shit they reconstructed and, and put. That's the shit they put Nas on? Yeah. Yeah, that shit boo-boo, man. That's why I hung that motherfucking phone. I ain't even, I ain't hear, I ain't hear, bro. All I heard was somebody else rapping on that motherfucker. <laughs> that shit boo-boo, man. I'm going to have to holler at N.O. Joe. I know N.O. Joe ain't had nothing to do with that. That had to be Corey Monium. Yeah, that song, yeah, it was called uh, Friends featuring Juicy J and Nas. Right it was called that joint called Long Live. Let me see that right. Yeah, they bring it, they bring it to me right now so I can look at these shit. Yeah. He's like, I got inspector's joint bring right it. here. He yeah, that's the one. Yeah, they cut my nigga shit. That song was three verses of Pimp, man. But they cut the other two verses because he was talking about Bun and them hoes, and you could tell he was talking about them, and they put... Features on him all. I don't listen to that. I got the real versions of the shit. Here, take this shit back. Put that back in there. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm glad you brought some clarity to that situation. Man, y'all should know this shit already. This shit ain't nothing new. Yeah, well, that's we always one occupation. It's crazy. Man, man, I ain't man, never man, heard that man. shit. I, I ain't never heard it. That shit fucked me up. That shit fucked mm. me up. I was laughing like, this shit is garbage. I ain't know what it was. I was going to tell y'all, man, put some PMC on. That was PMC, but that's not PMC. That's how bad they... Now y'all see how they fucked up my partner legacy where I got to do what I'm doing? Like, that shit, man, pimp, pimp would have spit on that shit. <laughs> And not in a good way. You took movie. two of his verses off, too? That was Friends. I know that song. He used to rap it to me all the time. He, Pimp had that song since he was in prison. Yeah, I know the whole... Yeah. I got the original version. And, I mean, that's the perfect segue into the introduction. 17, what's going on, man? This is T-Max. I missed the first interview you and King did a while back, so I'm happy and I'm honored to be part of this one, man. Um, all right, homie. You. What's up? Definitely, man. And, you know, that's the perfect segue in terms of an introduction for what's going on, man. I guess we started off like that, obviously. How important is it when, you know, because unfortunately, you know, uh, you know, with Pimp's passing and with so many artists that that happens to, you know, when they, you know, untimely leave us, um, how important is it to have people who are curators of their music, you know, the right individuals in their corner to make sure that their legacy is preserved, such as yourself, and just making sure that nothing is altered, changed, modified, you know, or anything like that. I can't, I can't tell you how important it is. It's, it ain't 100% important. It's 1,000% important. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. the motherfuckers who was supposed to do it in Big Bro case, them niggas turned into hoes. You know what I'm saying? They Niggas taking pimp beats from under the motherfucking songs and putting their beats under the songs so they could get the publishing. And his wife letting the shit go on, you know what I'm saying? That's why his wife and his mama never got along. 
Like, this shit ain't mm. nothing new under the sun, man. Anybody who got the book know this shit. Like, I just see, that's why I say, oh, uh, you know, and niggas get mad all they want, man, but that's why they say if you want to hide something from black people, put it in the book, man, because they ain't going to know. Right. They ain't going to read the shit. So I told you, you better, she need to make an audio version of that bitch. And, um, uh, yeah, niggas will get that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because... Boy, niggas is fucked up. Like, when niggas get that book and read it, they be fucked up by the time they done reading it. Hmm. But all they got to do is read it, and then I wouldn't have to say shit. But since since they don't want to read, I'm the one got to say shit, so I come across looking like the fucking villain. Well, if you read the book, motherfucker, I wouldn't have had to say nothing. And that's real. You know, one thing about it, uh, 17, is when we look at it from a literary perspective, uh, and I definitely got to pick up that book because um, that will definitely bring some clarity, you know, for myself because I knew nothing about it either. You being close to them. Right. You know, but you're not supposed to, homie. You can't blame yourself for that. You can't see. Right. I don't mean to cut you off either. But no, you're not supposed to, homie. Like, in in if Pimp's fans, they're not supposed to know. They, they wasn't in his everyday life. They wasn't around us every day. So that's just right. like if something happened to you, I'm not supposed to know the inner workings of what you had going on or whatever, whoever your closest friends and family are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you can't blame the people for not knowing. And if they've been getting misinformed, you know what I'm saying? And if they ain't read the book, you can't blame right. them for not knowing. Right. And I think that's why the literary science in terms of, publishing books is important you know everybody you know like king and myself we always talk in terms of physical copies of music and even a paraphrase skeletor from a he-man cartoon of all references books are the Mm -hmm. real treasures of the world because that's where you can read it and actually know in any situation everything we everything we we, everything they taught us homie it was all something that somebody else wrote that you had to read and and they taught it to us, but it came from somebody reading it. Right. You understand yeah. that? Like, I ain't trying to get deep on you, but ain't no, no fucking ahead, purpose ahead, of school. Yeah, ain't no purpose of school besides letting them white folks teach us what they want us to know, what they reading out of the books that was written hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Right. Well, when we when we step up to be our own motherfucking people, and, and you have a couple – Black folks that step up and actually write fucking books, the niggas don't read them. You did mm-hmm. so. It's gonna keep being stuck in that in that same bullshit they've been teaching since all us was in school. You know what I'm saying? Like when right. that shit, we already know that shit ain't true no more. But ain't ain't nobody rewrote history, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like ain't nobody fixed that shit. So it's, yeah. it's like you said, the the that's everything we got. It really come from a book. Mm-hmm. Every fucking thing, from religions to fucking history to social studies to science, all that shit come from a book, man. That's true. You just, we just had teachers talk that shit to us instead of us reading it. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Well, now I read it my motherfucking self. I don't want you to teach. I don't want you to tell me. I'm going to read it for myself and I'll make my own judgment. Unfortunately, ain't enough what, motherfuckers that, like that. Yeah. You know, and that's crazy, man. And, and it's interesting that what's dope about what you're doing, man, is what you're getting into the YouTube thing, and now you get to put your voice out there. Oh, man, I'm because, fucking them up, man. I'm fucking them up on YouTube, man. <laughs> I'm fucking these boys in their ear holes, man. They, they, don't, they can't believe it. They can't fucking believe it. Boy, you got haters coming out. You got Bunsen and his trolls over there. You got, I mean, it's so funny, man, but they, I know that they just don't know what to do with me. They like, I don't, man, they knew, they knew when, when I was there, though. They knew I was a problem. Like, damn, Pimpton got this little red-ass nigga from Mississippi. He got his own money. You can't tell him shit. He don't listen to nobody. No, I don't know you niggas. Y'all pimp homeboys. Fuck y'all. Like, yeah, he done told me what you did, you did, you did, you did. Pimp got to forgive you, not me, nigga. You ain't my homeboy. Fuck you in your ass, nigga. I didn't watch you make my homeboy cry in his mama. That's what I'm saying. So I'm fucking them up on YouTube because 
Yeah, when you first hear about y'all, 70 oh, he clout chasing, he this and that, bitch. I don't got to chase nothing. I ain't never wanted no attention. Pimp wouldn't, pimp ain't make me do no interviews. How many times y'all had to hit me to do this interview? I don't even like interviews. Let's let's get the let's make that clear. How many times y'all hit me to do this interview? It's the second time. Yeah. Exactly. But how many times you gotta hit me before I say, all right, man, I do it. Or I even answer you. It gotta be a couple times. Cause I don't like doing them. So if I was a clout chasing, yeah, I'm doing I'm going you know what I mean, I done every fucking major interviewer you could think of, I didn't turn I didn't they didn't offer, yeah. I didn't turn that shit down. For what? What I need to go on your platform for and let you ask me what you want to ask me for and 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 slice it up and put it how you want it. No, nah, I ain't doing that shit. Like, my nigga taught me for real what was up, and he told me I'll never make you do an interview or none of that shit if you don't want to. He said, you remind me of me before I went to prison. So with that being said, when he passed away, that's what the, yeah, I got the same mind frame. He said, I ain't got to do shit if I don't want to. Fuck. And it was the same way after he passed away, and it was me and his mama running around. And, and yeah, UGK Rex, I ain't have to do nothing. If I ain't want to do it, then we ain't do it. Nigga, fuck that show. It ain't matter if it was going to get 5000 7500 whatever. If I ain't want to go, we ain't go. Like, and I, ain't, I ain't and slave the money like them niggas. You can't fuck with me. So when I'm on YouTube, I'm giving you the honest to God truth. And then you hate to hear it so much. So you got to type a negative comment. You got to say something. These niggas keyboard banging. The keyboard warriors. I laugh my ass off at them. But then they go do the research and they see, damn, he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying, but I still don't like him because he said it. You don't like me because I told you the truth. The truth, nasty. It's like medicine, man. They don't like medicine, but you need it. You need it, nigga, because y'all don't know what the fuck going on. And ain't nobody else going to tell y'all. And that's real, man, because, I mean, from a... From that perspective, I mean, nobody else is going to know the truth better than the one who actually lived it and knows it. Um, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Man, you know how many times I motherfucking get out of my face with that threatening my life shit or what you going to do to me shit. Hey, man, if you give me, you give me. That means God said it was my time. You ain't finna scare me from telling the truth by threatening my life, nigga. Fuck you in who you talking about. Send them, nigga. I'm going to send them back to you in a box. If You, you better send them by the hundreds, ho. That's all I'm going to tell you. And I've been doing this shit for 14 years. You see, I'm still in my own this phone with you. Yes, yep. sir. Okay, then. Fuck them nigga, man. You, I don't, y'all, don't even, y'all don't have a clue. In terms of the business aspects of it, because there's always, and this is one thing, 17, that this is not just unique to you, but a lot of people in the industry in general between you know, uh, people who try, and obviously you don't fit into that category, as you just said, and we know about the attention uh, grabbing, but you see a lot of artists get out there using platforms, run around and telling stories, and on the other end of it, they find out that people in the circles that they run around are not always going to be the most reputable and honest. Um, Pretty Mm -hmm. much you know, you keep it as real as they come in terms of the game of it. I um, want to get your opinion first on what, on how do you feel social media, how a lot of artists are using social media not for a real purpose of branding themselves in the right way, but rather just a lot of crazy-ass antics just to become celebrities rather than become a complete artist. Man, I really can't knock them, bro. That's, that's what... <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what works these days. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I can't knock the little dudes for uh for looking up, seeing what works, and emulating it. You know what I'm saying? Like you, they're gonna imitate what they see work. So that's what they see in work right now. So right, as bad as I don't like it, I can't not like the little dudes who doing it because they only doing what they. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They doing what they see work. That's what everybody do. Get on social media and uh, shit, man. I'm gonna tell you what we say where I'm from. You could be anybody you want to be on social media, partner. You can be anybody you want to be on your Instagram, on your Facebook. You can be anybody you want to be. You can tell them people anything you want to tell them. Put up whatever picture you want to. 
that's they love that shit. We didn't come from that. Like we we come from yeah, you was gonna have to hear about us before we made it to you. You know what I'm saying? Like you had to hear about us. We had to be in them streets. We had to be really making noise in the music industry. It, it couldn't just be no, you know what I'm saying, this social media shit. No, we had to put the work in because if we, if I got to Atlanta and they ain't heard nothing about no 17, then I couldn't get no work done. If I got to PMC and he ain't heard nothing about no goddamn 17, he ain't really interested in featuring me or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like so, right. And that was the same for anybody in that era, anybody. But now, social media. So you can't be mad at them for doing it because they're only doing what they see work. They're going with the times. That don't mean we got to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I tell everybody. Like, everybody who complaining about it, well, let's stay in our lane. We got our lane over here. Let them do what they do. I think it's really, I think it's really a problem when you got the – it's, 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 to me, it's a problem when you got the older the older heads really going out there doing it. Now, they're supposed to be yeah. the ones that's been disciplined lead by example, and they using that. Yeah. They seen what worked for six nine, and now they trying to use it for their platform. And I, don't, I'm not feeling that at all. Yeah, now my that's different. You know, I'm talking about if I see a if I see an OG nigga in the game, he doing with with the little six nines and all them doing. No, nah, man, I'm <laughs> that's monkey, man. Like, what the fuck is you doing, man? Ain't your lane. Like, he trying to he trying to he trying to uh um. Uh, you know, fit in. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I, I don't know what the fuck you call that. You know what I'm saying? But for the youngsters, that's, that's all they know. You know, for them, no, nah, I, mean, I can't I can't say nothing bad about, about them because that's all they see. That's all they know. That's what they seen work. You know what I'm saying? But for, for cats our age, man, hey, man, if you 35 and above, if you 30 and above, man, you ain't got no business acting like these dudes acting – you know what I'm saying on the on the internet, like like playing on on Facebook and Instagram and and all that. Now, if you what they call it trolling, if you trolling, right. and and you in that and and you over that age, man, you yeah, you know, nigga, ain't nobody never gonna take you seriously. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta, it, it's so fucked up now, man. That niggas niggas don't know the difference between when a when a nigga just being straight up honest and don't give a fuck. Opposed to somebody trolling because you can't. It's hard to to tell the difference because the the truth will hurt so much sometimes. It'll seem like, oh, this nigga must be trolling. He's trying to get some attention. No, this nigga is telling the truth. This nigga over here is just trolling. He what he's saying ain't no truth to it. Ain't no nothing. He just shock value. He's saying something for shock value to get your fucking attention so you can come. Pay attention to him so he can sell you something. I guarantee you that nigga selling something. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so you just got to be able to 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 tell the difference between the two. I'm just smart enough to I can look at that shit. Uh, man, pimp taught us well, man. The whole crew. He's a Leo, big bub. I, we could look at something and tell you, say, man, they, that's a game. We don't call it clout chasing, clout chasing, whatever. We just, hey, man, that's that's a game right there. That's that nigga running game, like. Mm-hmm. Okay, that nigga tells the truth. We can look at it and tell you the difference. Like, and that's part of the. But like I said, everybody ain't gonna be oh, able to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like I said, everybody ain't gonna be able to do that. You, you know, you got a, a large, a large amount of the average everyday person that just they just uh, everybody clout chasing. Now, nah, homie, you better look in deep. You better do your research and and learn. Yeah. It's a damn shame we. It's a damn shame we got to figure out who telling the truth and who just clout chasing our days, but we do. And you got one guy out there, you know, whoever remain nameless. I mean, I don't like the way he puts it out there, especially with him acknowledging and disrespect to the dead, man. I mean, you you put him out. You already addressed that situation. But who are you talking about, Charles and White? I don't yeah. play them games. I don't play them games, man. That's the thing with me. Nick can't say I'm clout chasing. I'm nothing, man. It's the truth. If I got a problem with you, I'm going to put some addresses on that shit because I don't need to get misdirected. Yeah, fuck Charleston White and everything you stand for. You don't say my nigga name. You want to talk about DMX and say whatever about DMX? I'm a DMX fan, too. I ain't like that shit, but it wasn't my place to say nothing. 
when he said something about DMX. It really wasn't my place. DMX wasn't, I didn't know him personally. I was just a fan. But now, nah, when you come out your mouth talking about PMC died dope fiend and in the hotel room with some bras, now, nah, bitch, hold up. Like, my nigga ain't here. His mama ain't here. His uh, pops ain't here. You know what I'm saying? That's the only three that would have said something. Because the ones that's left, they ain't going to say shit. I'm the only one left going to stand up and say, hold up, nigga, what you say? Like, I'm the only one. That's it. Ain't nobody else going to stand up now and say, what you said, bitch, when somebody say something about pimp. So, yeah, don't, we, we ain't saying remain nameless. Fuck that nigga and everything he stand for. I thought the bitch ass nigga, you know, I was like, maybe he just doing that shit because he got a message. and He really trying to help some kids or whatever. Man, as soon as I seen all that shit he's doing now, nigga, like I told you, me, he's Leo, but we can look. Oh, no, this guy ain't. He running game. He just want to make some YouTube money. We're going to make you some YouTube money, nigga, but I tell you what you ain't going to do. You ain't going to make it off saying Pimp C name, bitch, in, in, a, in, a, in a negative way. You're not going to make it off saying Pimp C name in a negative way. That's what you're not going to do. You know, and one thing about a 17 is we've seen this so many times online um, because, and, you know, Charleston White, um, and we're just saying this because she started, you know, talking crazy stuff last year, Jaguar Wright talking about, you know, uh, yeah. going on Black Thought, you know, saying Malik B wrote all of his stuff after Malik but B see, died. That's what I'm telling you. Look at this. Look at this. Right. Mm-hmm. When somebody's telling the truth, you're going to know, man, because right. they're going to speak on that one thing they're telling the truth on, and that's what they're passionate about. But when you, like, right. you just mentioned Jaguar Wright, man, okay, she right. first came out, people ain't know, you know, okay, she is she telling the truth or is she clout chasing? Well, right. once you get about 10 people down the board that she, you didn't talked about and you claim you know their business, well, people know you clout chasing now. You see what I'm saying? You didn't know what she was doing right. at first. Now y'all feel me? Right. But after a while, after she didn't talked about every motherfucking body in the game, bitch, you don't know everybody's business. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, like, it's not that hard to tell. But us as black people, man, we really got to start using our fucking head before, before we open our mouth or before you let your fingers, yeah, hit that little keyboard, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, you we got to just step back and think for a minute, man. Look and think first. Yeah. I think, too, you know man, what I think people seen? see that they yeah. get excited with that extra attention because it used to be a yeah. time where yeah. whenever we know something, it's best to just keep your mouth shut about things. But I think we come in a stage and a time era where people don't catch the repercussions. They don't catch the wrath of you getting socked in the jaw or you getting thrown down a flight mm-hmm. of steps, talk crazy. Like they, 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 they yeah. can get, they can move comfy. Man, these boys real comfortable, man. They real comfortable, cause they, yeah, like I say, it, it, it's Twitter fingers. They don't have to. They, they ain't gonna never see you in person. They feel like they ain't them, them boys. Ain't like I said, they ain't really moving around. We had to move around. We had to, we had to be seen, heard, and touched. You know what I'm saying? To make out to to even make an imprint in the game when I was coming through. Nah, they ain't gotta do that. They they could sit in the comfort of their home and and shoot out there on the internet whatever they wanna say. Whatever lie the biggest lie you could think of, and they could shoot it out and and that that, that shit fuck around, go viral, and you ain't never gotta see the man face to face that you said that about. It wasn't like that when I was coming up. So that's why I'm not used to it. I don't engage in it. Motherfuckers talk crazy. Man, I don't even see that shit because I'm even trying to find all you bitches' address. I'm going to want to see all y'all face to face, and there's no way possible I can do that. And it ain't cool. no way possible. And they the first one to call the police. Yeah. Oh, they, you going to jail, partner. You going. Show up at one of those steps that's talking crazy to you on the Internet. Boy, you going straight to jail. Because like I told y'all, now you can talk all that crazy shit from the comfort of your home and, or from the comfort of knowing I'm probably never going to see this person face to face. That's just how it yeah. is now. That's just how it yeah. is now. But, it, it, I mean, as long as, as long as you be trill with it, 
A motherfucker ain't gonna play with you for long. They'll play their tight, whatever, whatever. But when a motherfucker see you serious and you finna get on their ass and you tell, hey, bitch, I'm gonna ping that, that IP address, I'm telling you now. Like, yeah, motherfuckers will step down. Like, they know now that, yeah, bitch, I can get at you. I don't give a fuck where. I don't care what you typing from, what you on, what you, bitch, I, I got action at you. I can get at you, boy. Like, once, once, I didn't have to do it a couple times, man. Like, Usually I look over, y'all don't know. Man, I ain't gonna even say hundreds of thousands. It's been over a million. A nigga talking shit to me that I just look over. I don't even let him. Man, fuck that shit. Sometimes, if I ain't in the mood though, I'm on that bitch. Nigga say something talking crazy. Usually as if they, I don't care what they say about me. It's just somebody say something about pimp or mama with. Say something negative. Oh man, I'm on that nigga. I'm finding out. IP addresses. I got your, your, your last three cell phone numbers. Your last two schools you went to, the last car you drove, <laughs> which driving now, bitch. I got the last four of your social. I got man, when a nigga see you do that, oh he gonna fall back. Trust me, I promise you. Like, oh, yeah, ninety five percent of the time, bitch ass nigga gonna fall back because he gonna see, okay, this one I can't play with. Like, let me go play with somebody else. Cause that's all they doing is playing, man. They bored. Boys ain't got nothing to do. They sitting at home. I ain't never seen no shit like this. Yeah, misinformed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy, ass, man, nigga. because like, yeah, it's crazy, 17, like you said, because what we, you know, um, because there's so many things we got to touch on with what you said, you know. Uh, like King said, my brother said, um, and I always think back, because he knows where I'm going with this, when we interviewed uh, OG Bezel a couple of years back. Number one, this yeah. goes from a region. Not necessarily it's just the southern region, because it can go down anywhere. But when he said, you know, one of the funniest interviews we ever did, when he talked about how when you start dissing niggas online or just uh, start dissing niggas in the street, you're going to have to see that man in the street one way or the other, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the South be different, as King would say. Um, yeah. You know, what's also troubling, 217, is what we're seeing because King and myself and many other people we know, Dyer Lansky, shout out, shout out to Die For Radio, Dirty Basement Radio, of course, with DJ Sincere, so many of our friends. We pride ourselves on doing journalism in terms of real journalism and real facts. And a lot of these people are trying to pass themselves off as being curators of journalism in terms of being real reporters. So, yeah, and, yeah. and you, you set it off, and we're going to name names. Charleston White, uh, Hassan yeah. Campbell, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, Car- Carcino. <laughs> Who else are we missing? Kim? Yeah, uh, Carcino. <laughs> uh, it's another one. Yeah, Brad, uh, um, I'm trying to get that other dude name, though. Uh, but he along the lines of the Hassan Campbell and all. Yeah, that's not, man, look, listen, man. Mm-hmm. Get your money how you get it. You feel me? That's this how right. I'm telling you how I look at shit. Get your money how you get it, man. I I don't know what to tell you, but I would hope that 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 our our people would be smart enough to know when, like I said, man, something is game and something ain't. Like, I mean, you know not to listen to that, right? Like, if you're watching it for entertainment, okay, but you know, like, don't don't take that. Uh, as 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 facts, right? You know what right, I'm saying? right? Yeah, but sadly, they take that shit as facts, man. They take that shit but as facts. Also, yeah, but it's also a problem too that we've seen in the hood, you know, just in general, too much, especially with social media being so widespread. Seventeen from the aspect of, you know, as black people, some of us, because I have to preface this saying, some of us, you know, not all of us, but some of us have a very unhealthy relationship with drama and strife and that's how a lot of this stuff gets out here and it gets more legs than what it should um man if that you, shit don't change soon bro we're gonna be fucked up and i said that in one of my videos i don't know probably about a month back but mm-hmm. i tell us change it. it by myself one man can't change it by itself but if, if these right. niggas don't get off this shit well man let me tell you something i could i could do a video tonight and if I want that bitch to get a million views, all I got to do is be negative. All I got to do is talk about somebody, say something bad, right. talk negative. Mm-hmm. That's all I got to do. Because niggas love drama. They're going to click on that. Now, if you want your shit, 
to get like 10 views, talk about something positive. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be one of them that click on the positive one. Fuck that drama shit, that nigga shit. I don't, I don't click on that shit, but that's me. I'm, I'm smart enough not to know, hey, man, I'm, I'm on another level. Like, that don't mean right. they are. They still down there somewhere. You know what I'm saying? They still, y'all still, y'all, that's still, that's self-destruction, pop. What they that's own, real, you know man. what I'm saying? Like, it's different if you, if you seeking truth. If you seeking truth, that's something different, man. Look everywhere you can look. I would say do all the research you can. But when you just clicking on shit because it, it sounds like drama or it look like drama, man, it's so obvious, bro. It's like, damn, that what y'all really want to see? That what y'all really want to hear? Like, and, and it wild. is, though. And it's it's wild, too, man. And, and because, that's why you got shade, yeah. room, shade Room and academics and all these platforms blow, eating real good because they, they, they do nothing but showcase the negative images of the culture. Yeah, because they know it's going to, they know they're going to get money off of it, bro. I don't know how else to explain it. Like I say, I don't fault them. I don't fault them because if they wasn't doing it, somebody else going to be doing it. Somebody going to take advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody going to make that money, bro. It's the whole the fucking language. culture. If the culture don't switch or change or get some motherfucking dignity about itself, that shit ain't gonna change. You know, it ain't gonna change. Goes I'm sorry right. if if y'all ain't sorry if I'm bringing bad news, but I'm telling you, if the culture don't shift or the culture don't change, or somebody or or more than just one or two people are talking about this, having this conversation, it's not going to fucking change. It's going to stay like that. Motherfuckers just clicking on shit that's messy, clicking on shit that's messy. Like, it's going to stay like that, and it's going to get worse. And it's real, man, because to me, psychologically, just as a human being, you know, it's like anything. If you keep injecting poison all day, you're going to die eventually in body and mind because I, I'm just one of those people that, I understand the truth is not pleasant to read, and I'll read something unpleasant if I know there's truth behind it to figure out how I can be proactive in finding a solution. But, damn it, mm. I just can't go online all day like some of these people. I mean, you know, like, all day. You know, like, dude, like, dude, like the Hassan Campbell, all he does is go online for like three hours talking about some crazy negative. I'm like, I'm like, like King said, who wants to listen to three hours worth of negativity? Dude, I'm like, I ain't even got enough hours in a day to be that negative. We don't you know? want to do that. We don't want to hear, but you see his numbers? Yeah. So that's telling you right there. When you say, who wants to listen to three hours of negativity? Man, his numbers is showing you. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the sad part. That's the sad part, homie. Like, yeah, a whole bunch, my nigga. So let's flip it on the let's flip it on the on the positive side. What keeps you inspired as an artist in terms of motivated to really keep you know whether you know you speak on the truth on your YouTube page or just creating music? Um, what gives you the 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 drive to keep going and really really spread that message of the trill? You know, from one of the most real and respected. And to keep cultivating, we got to keep it right instead of wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. What motivates Three you things. on that? Three mm -hmm. things, man. One, the way I was raised. I ain't come from no broken home, man. You know what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. I lost my mama a couple years ago. My dad's still alive. All the decisions I made in the streets, that was me. I was raised right. I jumped right. out there in the street. For one, right. the way I was raised, I was raised with principles, morals. I know I knew right from wrong my whole life. I chose to do wrong. I trying to get some money. You know what I'm saying? Like, so my principles and my morals have always been them. So my principles and my morals shape the man that I am. The everything mm -hmm. I do, everything I I speak, everything I everything you do is is or say. You better be able to stand on that. In my opinion. In my opinion, now you got millions of people that they'll say whatever and they, they ain't going to stand on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they, you'll knock them off their square. 
and, and, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you ain't knocking me off shit. If I said it, I said it, I meant it, and, it, and it's true. Like, so that's one thing. Number two, I got taught even more when that man didn't have to embrace me. He didn't have to. He couldn't let me go to the feds. I knew I was going. He knew I was going. They had been following me for forever. So it was just a matter of time. He didn't have to save me. You know what I'm saying? So for somebody to bring me in, save me, here, man, ain't no more. You ain't got to make money off that no more. You going to make money off this music shit, little nigga. You cold. And then show me. And then, I'm yeah, I'm getting the same amount of money off music. Okay. Well, I, I, I feel I owe an allegiance to him in his legs. So, bam, put that with my principles and my morals and everything I do as a man already. I'm too solid, homie. I'm too solid. Like, I can't. I can't tell you nothing fake. I can't tell you a lie. See, you see how I build to the person I am and what I say? So that's just number two. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't. I can't tell you a lie. I can't. And I can't let somebody shit on his legacy if they telling a lie. Now, if they telling the truth, it is what it is. Because my homeboy, the vices he did have, he ain't give a fuck if you knew. You know what I'm saying? Like, but when you're talking outside your head, man, I got the chicken, man. You know what I'm saying? Because the ones that claim they love him and whatever, whatever y'all, they ain't saying shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's number two. Number three, hey, man, I got kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, my son, seven years old right now. When I leave something behind or whatever happened to me, one thing he's going to be able to say is my daddy, yeah, he was a boss. Like, you wasn't going to tell my daddy what to do. You wasn't going to control my daddy. You wasn't going to. I don't. I want my son to be exactly the same, just as mm-hmm. fucking hard and stubborn and be your own fucking boss. And man, you ain't got to punch no time clock, little dude. Like, no. And I, and I got to leave something for him. So what I leave for him is gonna be based on truth and morals and principles. So that way he don't even have to work hard to keep the shit going. All he got to do is be yourself, tell the truth, and stand on the principles and morals that he stands on. Cause that's yeah, that's the way daddy built it. That's the way it was left. So I'll, for you to run it, all you got to do is be you. You don't have to be a character. You don't have to be an actor. You don't have to be none of that. So that's what keep me going well. Yeah, okay. They doing this with the music now? It's, it's murder music now? Well, no, nah, I ain't making that. That ain't what I make. I make country rap tunes. So since all these, these little niggas is buying up murder music right now, I'm not going to change what I do. To sell more records Hold up All these people looking for me They want to talk to me How I get money off this YouTube shit Okay Now how do I tell the truth And get money off this YouTube shit Oh just don't curse Oh okay I got this shit Alright I got it All you gotta do is just find your lane man You ain't gotta be lying You ain't gotta be be acting You ain't gotta uh uh Put no fake ass character out there, man. Find your lane, man. Shut the fuck up. Like I can't stand that old fake ass shit when niggas do fake shit. They just, nigga, you you only gonna be able to do that fake shit for a certain amount of time and make money off of it before it catch up with you. Now y'all understand when I say I've been doing this shit for fourteen years without since pimp died, nigga. If it was a flaw or anything wrong with what I was saying, it would have been happened fourteen years ago. You want me to call Riley B right now? I can call a family right now. It would have been came my partner. I'm way too solid. They can't fucking believe it. Oh, my God. How is somebody more solid than pimp? I mean, more solid than bun when it come to pimp. They can't fucking believe it. It ain't just me. It's the whole UGK record. His whole crew. We lost half of them, though. Rest in peace, Vicious. Rest in peace, uh, uh, I repeat. You know what I'm saying? Like, we losing people, man. The ones that would have stood up and been right on side of me, that was right on side of me, telling people the truth and speaking up just like me, they gone now. He's Leo is not finna jump out there like I do and voice that. He gon' he's he, look. People got different. They are different. Hey man, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know what I'm saying? Big Bub ain't gonna jump out there 
and and just when you say something, if he knows it's a lot, jump out there and tell him, man, fuck you. Who you talking to? Blah, blah, blah. Like, tr- no, nah, he ain't got time, so he moving around the streets doing what he got to do. He's the yeah, trucking business, uh, kids, uh, and he always going to stay politically correct. Me? No, nah, man, you just going to get the raw truth. You just going to get the motherfucking raw truth, homeboy. I don't give a fuck who like it and who don't as long as it's the truth. And do you have a documentary on the works? Yeah, we working on it. I had cameras on me from 2006 to 2018. Whoa. <laughs> That's a long... Yeah, that shit man, long as a motherfucker, man. Shit is breaking my pockets to get edited, man. You know how much footage that is? Yeah. That's a lot fuck. of content. Mm-hmm. And I don't even want to speak on it because you know what happened in between all them years. Like this, yeah, this before I met Pimp, all the way to 2018. Because after I lost my mama, fuck that, camera's off, shit over. Like, <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's yeah. Tell us about the, some of the new music you got going on, too. You have any, like, mixtapes or albums up and coming? Man, ain't that shit ain't happening. I got my own store, man. Like I say, all you got to do, you ain't got to catch up. You just got to catch in. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I got my band camp store. Fuck with everybody else talking about, man. I fuck with band camp. My, you go there, you click that, that motherfucking link, it's going to show you every motherfucking thing I drop. I put I drop shit when I want to. And it's my store. I don't have to fuck. No, I ain't splitting shit with no distributor. I ain't splitting shit with nobody. That's my motherfucking shit. You buy that shit every penny go to me. And it lets you pay however much the fan want to pay. Man, I got fans that pay $100 for one. I put out one single. Yeah, they, they'll pay $100 for that shit. They don't give a fuck. Man, UGK fans got money, man. Them boys is in the streets. Yeah, them girls is on that toll, man. They ain't worried about no motherfucking money. They want the music they want to hear. That one I'm saying funny to me, man. Like, the boy taught me, I'm telling you, man, Pimp was like, he wasn't lying when he said, I'm like years ahead of you niggas, man. He really was. He he taught me so much, man. I'm so cold. I'm cold-blooded, man. I don't have to have uh, a half a million people buying my shit to make a certain amount of money. Nah, I could have 10,000 people, 10,000 people, core people. That buy my shit and I make the same amount of money as a nigga who got five hundred thousand people buying that shit. That's a cold that game, man. Yeah. Because yeah, you yeah. Know, they get on Spotify and all this crap. They censor your music. When you get on Spotify, shit, when they get on Spotify, they on Spotify, Amazon, E Music, and all that because I know I didn't did it. I'm, yeah, I had album go through uh, Empire. I had albums go through uh, TuneCore and iTunes, all that. You yeah, you they they getting a cut of your shit, man. You barely getting anything off your sales. You barely getting any fucking thing off your sales, and your shit is everywhere. Man, fuck that. I got my own store, and everything in that motherfucker. I can shit. I can tell y'all, made. I ain't making no million. I made thousands off of every motherfucking single or album you see in that store. That's what I'm telling you, man. You ain't got to catch up. You just got to catch in, man. Find your wave, homeboy. Find out what work for you. Fuck is you trying to do what everybody else doing for? And I done told niggas. I gave, I gave the youngsters a couple niggas and followed my lead. And they getting their money, too. Shit. They open a band camp store. Hey, all you got now, all you got to do is send people to your store. They, when everybody, man, when you going to drop something new? Man, go here. Go to this link. I don't even need to hear that shit. Everything right there. Yeah, from the old shit to the new shit, nigga. So don't ask nothing else. Once they got that link, they got they link to you forever. Whenever you put something out, it's gonna go right there. They gonna know. It give a, it give you a notification setting where whenever I drop something, boom, your phone will bling bling. You know what I'm saying? It's not hard. That's it. It's That's not hard. That's the grassroots way of supporting the artists. Yeah. But niggas try to run from that because they they feel like they won't have a big enough following. I don't. I guess I'm kind of spoiled in a way because I don't know what that feel like. You know what I'm saying? Like I came out grinding like a motherfucker. We pressed up our first thousand CDs 
when I was 17 years old and we sold all thousand and thought we was rich, nigga. We thought we did it big. Well, it was big where we was from. You know what I'm saying? Well, nobody doing shit in Mississippi. So from then on, yeah, it was just a snowball effect. You couldn't tell me shit. Hold up. You mean I go in the studio, use my voice God gave me, put it on top of this music, and they going to buy it, and they love it, and they playing me all in the clubs on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. I, shit, I'm walking in here. They treat me like I'm a superstar. Man, I think I'm going to stick with this for a little while, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't, it wasn't fucking rocket science. Band camp is the wave, man. I mean, I crop, I crop some of your joints off of there too. Yeah, that's that's really the only way I would I would like people to buy my shit. I know people still getting it off iTunes and Amazon or whatever, but now, nah, man, if you fuck with me and you want me to see you support me, go to my store. That's my store. Like Pimp used to say, I'm telling you, he was light years ahead of these niggas. <laughs> so I make them get down on the grind, open up the store. Man, look, that was 14 years ago on She Love It. Yeah, man, I opened up the store. <laughs> so buy you some. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that fucking easy. It's not rocket science. And you I ain't got to try. Mean, well, I don't have to. I don't have to try hard. I don't have to. Hey, hey, y'all. Uh, I just dropped a new single. Go check it out. I just dropped. Man, I say that shit one time. Put on, make one video. Hey, y'all want it? Y'all want it? Yeah, it's out. Say that shit on, on my YouTube channel. Say that shit on my Instagram. They go buy that shit. I'm done. I'm done. I'm on to the next one. Yeah, it's not. It's that you. You got to find your own formula. If you're a boss, you gonna find your own formula. Uh, how many songs yeah. exactly do you think? How many songs exactly unreleased songs do Pimp have out there? Unreleased does he have out there now or when he passed? Records that he put out like before he passed away. Well, if he if he put them out before he passed away, then they not unreleased. What you mean? Yeah, you know, like for example. When when Tupac passed, he had a ton of unreleased records that never really got. He never got the release. Like you like this is like yeah. this is like a vault of records that Pimp has that has not really been. They didn't, yet. they didn't pretty much use them, no. They like oh, uh, okay. y'all got to understand everything from the the UGK for Life album. That's the album yeah. that came out after the Double Disc album. Okay, the right. UGK for Life album, Pimp didn't have nothing to do with it. everything from there on. They. Yeah, that was all his shit. They would just take his beats from under him and let Corey Moe put his fucking beats under him or some shit. And that's what made the shit not jam because Pimp had it how he wanted it. But if you let Corey Moe put his beats under it, then he can get the publishing deal because he has placements. You understand? Mm. Same thing they did with me with the song I, me and Pimp had, uh, um, Ride With Me. When Big Critch stole the shit and Bun, him and Bun got on it. They just took the beat I made from under it and put a core mo beat under it. And let Bun rap on it. Is is this shit they've been doing the same shit since Pimp Pass. So I mean they they didn't pretty much use it up. The only thing they don't have is the shit that me and the UGK Posse got. That's the shit that we was working on before he passed away. And yeah, I got it. Shit, I ain't seen like I say. Y'all let that y'all let I'll let bullshit talk scare y'all if you want to. Ain't nobody uh ever came to my house tried to kill me and uh take the music I got. I dare you, bitch. Come on. Yeah. Ain't nobody tried to bust some big bub shit or he's a Leo shit and take the shit we got. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't just put it out there either because we don't know where that shit going. We we it's so fucked up. You know what I'm saying? His wife was fucking up the money so bad the state of Texas removed her. She's not in charge of the state no more. Oh, bitch wow. stole everything, lost the house, every like goddamn bitch. That's why Mama West ain't like your ass. Like, Ooh. so I don't know where that shit's going. It ain't going to shit. It ain't going shit. Chatty Boo grown, Corey grown, Christian is his daughter. She with uh, his wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, where, if we put this shit out, where's it going? Where's the where's the portion that pimp? supposed to get where is it going so fuck that we just keep that shit and ride to it our fucking self 
Um, it's, I'm telling you, man, it's more to this shit than y'all know, man. It's way, way more to this shit than what y'all dude, see. Dude, our head is spinning right now because this is a lot in terms of the business. And not only business, but, I mean, just in terms of how your music is structured in terms of labels, but also in terms of the executors of your estate. Um, Correct. 17, we, we talked on this show so many times about this, but please, in your unaltered, all trill, shoot from the hip, let a motherfucker know real shit, tell artists out here today how important it is to have all your business affairs in place from your production, publishing, and if, unfortunately, something happens to you before it's your time, mm-hmm. the executors of your estate to make sure that your money is properly uh, taken care of. Right. How the, important the best way The best way I can explain it to these youngsters, my brother, because these little niggas is crazy, man. Like, right. Which young is boy's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna tell you the best way I can put it where they, can, where they'll get it, and then I'll tell it to y'all in a way that we talk as grown ass men. Now, to you youngsters, right. to man, this is how important it is. Imagine if you got, if you got a truckload, right? Mm-hmm. You got a truckload, or you ain't even got a truckload. You got your ten bricks, homie. You got your ten kilos, right? You done, right. you done been saving your money and your homeboys been putting in and all your whatever. But y'all got 10. Okay. Imagine if you had to go out of town. You you know you ain't going to bring them drugs, but you can't bring them with you. Right. Would, who would you put in charge of making sure that your shit safe, secure, your money good, and everything is distributed properly? Okay. Think about that and do the same thing with your music, nigga. That's how important it is. So that's for the youngsters. Right. Because when you die, that's just like you going out of state, nigga, and you couldn't take that dope with you. Except you ain't coming back when you die. You know what I'm saying? So use that same judgment of who you would have put in charge of, hey, watch the house and make sure don't nobody break in, make sure somebody's staying at the house, make sure, uh, hey, they gonna, this one going to want a four-way, this one going to want a nine, make sure you sell it, sell it to this one for this. Yeah, all that. Set your music up the same way. You need your publisher. You need your masters. You need your motherfucking uh uh yeah your your copyright. All that shit, nigga. Don't don't jump in the game and not have your business right. If you can't, if you ain't gonna do the paperwork, don't get in it. Right. Nigga, if you think you're just gonna jump in rapping, if if you didn't jump in rapping and you got an album out, a so called album, and you ain't got no, you never filled out no paperwork, nigga. You ain't an artist. You just a rapper. You somebody who doing the shit for a hobby. So that's that's how important it is. Now on our level, I can say it like this. Man, look, if if my nigga would have knew, which how could he know? Look how young he was, man. Right. He was thirty three years old. N- niggas tend to forget, you know what I'm saying, how young Pimp was. He was thirty three years old, man. Right. Thirty three years old. I was twenty six, so I know. You know what I'm saying? If my nigga would have knew that something was about to happen to him in any shape, form, or fashion when it comes to health-wise, like he wasn't going to be here no more, mm-hmm. man, he would have structured that shit so much differently. I guarantee you everything would have been in his mama name. I guarantee it. And after his mama, his kids. So for me, it's just it's a terrible fucking learning experience, but I learned. So, like my shit, like I just told y'all about my son, I don't have to worry about that shit. I don't have to worry about that. Like, no, no. And I had to learn the hard way. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want nobody else to have to learn the hard way. Don't nobody else need to go through what I went through. Just do what the fuck I'm telling you. Get it together right now. If you ain't got it together, it don't take long, man. Don't be lazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you don't know what you're doing, hey, man, chill out with the studio time for a month and pay you a lawyer. Mm. Just make sure it's an entertainment lawyer. And and right. everything I just told y'all, 
Tell them that's what you want done. And pay the man. And, and yeah, after you pay him, at least you can rest assured that your shit is in order and you getting paid your residuals while you here. Not only when you gone, now your shit going to be in order where you getting checks now. So, like I said, homie, to the young ones out there, hey, man, just chill out on studio time for a month. The money you spend on going to the studio for a month, well, almost everybody got their own studio now because it's so fucking easy. So, okay, let's say whatever whatever your little vices is. All these niggas think they sip and drink. That ain't no real drink, man. That's not activist. They don't make activists no more. But let's say you sip and drink, nigga. You're smoking weed, whatever. Okay, chill out with your vice for a month. Use that money you would have spent on that. Pay you a lawyer and get all that shit I just said done. It ain't going to take a number two weeks. And at least you will have steady checks coming in now. And at least you will know if something happened to you, your shit is in order. It's that simple. Like, don't don't, don't make it hard for them to understand because it's not hard. Just get it done. Now, if they don't do it after that, the fuck we going to do? We told them. That takes a lot of that's real. because I remember hearing a story where Yo Gotti said that for two, like for about a good two years, he was going to stack up bread to buy himself out of his contract. He ain't buying yeah. no cars. He ain't buying no, he took all that touring money, all that record money just to buy himself yeah, out. Yeah, save all that shit and I'm buying myself out this motherfucking contract. Yeah, that was uh, what he joined with TVT. Um, and seventeen, mm-hmm. that's like a legendary proportion because he paid two hundred and fifty thousand to get himself out of his contract. Yeah. He but all he did was the same thing I just told y'all, except it wasn't just a month. He saved all his show money that he was making like over it's like a y'all know I fu- I did a song with Gotti, like um we talked about it. It was like it was a little over a year. You know, he would just mm-hmm. save the money. And then once he had enough. Yeah, I'm buying myself out this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. but, but, but gotta get done. If, if he, if he, you can best believe him, you can ask him if y'all ever interview him. He'll tell you, I wish I wouldn't have never signed that shit in the first place so I wouldn't have had to buy my shit. I could have used that 250 for something else. You know what I'm saying? But he would probably tell you he wouldn't, he wouldn't change it because he learned from it. Like, yeah, that was an expensive ass lesson, partner. But he learned from it. But if he learned from it, and y'all know the story, and y'all telling the people, and y'all hear me telling them, if they don't fucking listen after that, then man, you just don't fucking listen. You know, it's real seventeen because when we see today a lot of artists get in the game, um, because it's so much different from because we're all older and uh, wiser. We've been blessed by God to accumulate the wisdom. We grew up in a time in hip-hop where when an artist signed with a label, it was so much different, you know, especially with hip-hop in its early stages. You know, a lot of these labels were independent. With a label, it was worth it. It was it was, it was, was yeah. thing to do. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no 360 deals. It right. wasn't none of that right. shit. That's where you I was know? going. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, yeah, it was the thing to do then. No, it, 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 it's the total opposite now. Yeah, and a lot of times these kids don't understand coming in because a lot of them are kids, and I don't mean that disrespectfully because we see a lot of youngins coming in, and they're just, you know, the two problems that I see in the game right now is they're looking at it from a perspective of the Internet. They're thinking that the Internet is going to make them instantly famous, you know, as they call go viral, and then sometimes mm-hmm. it does parlay into a record deal. But the problem is I was when they get into some shit. It do sometimes. Yes. And but they don't know what they're signing when they get with a label. You know, they're they're just happy to get on. You know what I'm saying? Until <laughs> they realize yeah. they're in a bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you, why you think you didn't see so many pop up and go. Right. Mm-hmm. Because once they realize what they signed and motherfuckers was just like, well, fuck it. Like, you know, I'm going to breach the shit out of this contract or I'm going to buy myself out of it or I'm going to do whatever. And then, you know, yeah, they still be dropping music. You just don't hear about them, quote, unquote, worldwide no more. You know what right. I'm saying? But that's why you see so many one-hit. They call them one-hit wonders. No, 
that's just the the song that they had a machine behind them on. Then they mm-hmm. realized what the fuck they signed, and yeah, uh, I gotta get the fuck out of this. And yeah, you're not gonna hear from them no more because they they no longer have a quote unquote machine behind them. But shit, you crazy if you think they ain't still making money. Oh yeah, you crazy? Yeah. Yeah, a lot it of times it they, only takes one the song. Smart ones, the smart ones took advantage of the, the fans that they gained when they had a machine behind them, and they kept the momentum going and just kept dropping shit independently once they got themselves out that fucked-up-ass contract. You might not hear about it, but please believe, yeah, the money stack up, man. only take a couple thousand people to buy your shit for you to make profit. And then that ain't including shows, features, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 no limit to this shit. That's true. And I think a lot of times, you know, like you said, man, once you find an audience, you know, who rocks with you, because your core audience, and I think that's the most important thing being an artist, whether old or new, is that once you have the people that really rock with you off of it, you know, that's mm-hmm. that's your base. That's the people that really are going to patron your product, whether you are oh. hot or cold, you know, and oh, that's, that's the most important core. thing. Yeah, your core. You can't worry about uh you can't worry about all the fly by night fans. You can't worry about that because you're gonna have so many of them, like they ain't really preach, preach. they ain't really core fan. They just they heard one song from you and, and seen one video they liked from you and so they fucked around and bought that album. But, no, I'm talking about the ones that have been dying with you, got the first shit you ever put out all the way to the shit you doing now. That's who you do it for. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's the only ones you need to be worried about. What's it like for you and in the trust trees? Me, they going to keep your ass fans. afloat. They going to keep your boat floating. Uh-huh. Yeah. What's it like for you when you interact with your fans out there? When you just talk to them and they just tell you how much they appreciate what you do and they show you, you know, how they've been patroning your product and everything else, whether it's shows or merchandise or what have you. Man, I love I love my fans, man. I got some trill motherfuckers, man. Like <laughs> I ain't bull- <laughs> I ain't bullshitting, man. I'm talking about it's some motherfuckers out there. I promise, man. Got love for Big Bro like I did, man. I but I lived with him. They ain't never even met him, and they love him like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you a seventeen fan, you a Pimp C fan. So it that's that just go hand in hand. So right, my what I look for is you know the diehard Pimp C fans, and and when they diehard Pimp C fans, usually they diehard seventeen fans. They know nah, I don't give a fuck with you. I don't care how they try to blackball this little nigga. I don't care what y'all say. Pimp, it came out pimp mouth. This first round draft pick, he the one was living with pimp. Y'all niggas hating, and they buy this, and they know it, and they just keep rolling. And I'm telling you, it's in the females, man. They will cut your head off, man. And in female, I'm, I'm telling you, man. Y'all, man, say something bad about seventeen around them females who fuck with me, man. They will cut your head off in them comments. I don't have to say nothing. I be letting the fans go. I'm, I be out and tell the fans, chill out. Man, y'all chill out. If I'm not worried about them, what the fuck y'all worried about them for? Like, so, the, your core is who you, that's who you worry about. Mm-hmm. Your core that's audience you is who you worry about. Don't worry about nobody else. That's when you know you have an army. Oh, yeah. That's, and, and, and they will suit up behind your ass, too. And especially if you're doing something that, like I said, from the, it all go back to what I said before. They know what I'm doing is on my morals and my principles. On my merch. It don't say 17. It don't say hogging. It don't say 17 to hog. It don't say the protege. It say long live pimp chad. Everything I do is yes, long live pimp chad. I don't, you hate 17? Yeah, I hate 17 because that nigga this neck and pimp C. I made you say his name, didn't I? Pussy ass nigga. I know what I'm doing. Like, I'm playing chess. You niggas playing checkers. You can talk about me bad all you want. I made you say Pimp C. I made you think about Pimp C when you wasn't even thinking about him no more. It's, it's really like 
Yeah, it's a brain fuck, bruh. You know how hard my how much shit I went through before I realized Oh shit. It don't matter if they saying negative shit. As long as they saying pimp name, I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Like as long as I can make them say his name, I'm doing what the fuck I'm out here to do. Man, once I learned that it was over. I don't give a fuck. That's my answer to everything. You could ask me about anything. Oh, what about bun and what I don't give a fuck. Oh, what about so and so and blackballing you and but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> what about uh pimp wife? I mean you lived with I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. If I made you say pimp C, long live pimp C, or I made you go put his C D on a, a oh, I'm sorry, they don't even listen to C D no more. You you pulled up his song on whatever, I did my job, man. I did my motherfucking job. No doubt, man. Now we about to uh we got uh, a couple more minutes to spare before we wrap it up, man. We wanna just take the time to say thank you for joining us. And you have any other shout outs you wanna give out there? No, nah, man, I don't do shout outs, man. It's just God and my angels and That's it, man. You know. Oh, my supporters. Yeah, the thing is. That's it. And probably the other, I don't know. I don't mm mm. I'm cool, man. I'm coasting. I'm in my own lane. So we know about the haters you don't give a fuck about, 17, but we got to give homage to something you absolutely love, which is Pimp's legacy. What do you think made Pimp such a respected, loved, and treasured uh, presence in hip-hop? It was the same thing that it's the same thing that he taught me that I'm doing right now. And that's mm-hmm. say what you're thinking. Say what you feel. Like I said, I wear my heart on my sleeves. So right. in New York and, and the East, all these boys talking down on the South, that was Pimp who spoke up for us. You know what I'm saying? Right. When, uh, when shit, the West was talking down on us. That was Pimp who spoke up for us. It was Pimp who spoke up for the South, period. Like, you couldn't say nothing bad about the South. He could say something bad about Atlanta, but bitch ass nigga, if you from New York or something, and you try and say something about Atlanta, pimp gonna eat your ass up, and the whole South knew it. So he's he's our Tupac. Mm. I don't know how I don't, I don't know how else to put it. I've been saying it for fourteen years. Like that's his legacy, homie. It's it's. You you might not like me, but you you gotta respect me. You might not like what I'm saying, but it's true. You know what I'm saying? Like how many how many people y'all know was was pissed off behind that Atlanta radio interview? Remember? They mad this day. Right. They mad to this day about right. that interview. But what? Wait, yeah, they still mad today. But look at it. Look today. Look at everything he said in that interview, and look today. What he said? They knew San Francisco. Look at them today. They was that then, but the whole world didn't really realize. We knew because we had to do shows. You know what I'm saying? He said, half the rappers that, that's representing that motherfucker ain't from them. <laughs> do your research. You know what I'm saying? Right. He was the head of the game. I mean, like that's, that's all he was. Yeah, like. So that's his legacy, homie. Like, like that's why I don't, I don't, I don't backpedal on nothing. If I said it, I meant it, and it's true. That's the only, that's one thing. If anything happened to me, they gonna be able to say, if seventeen said it, that shit happened. It's true. Like, go, you can go research it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm gonna be able. I stand on it. And that's his legacy. He stood on what he said. He, I mean, everything he said, he meant it, and he stood on it. If he let it come out of his mouth, he meant that shit. I promise you. He wasn't just playing with you. Like, and that that's his legacy. Now, the reason that's so important was, like I said, I'm a DMX fan also. The same reason DMX was important. If he said it, he meant that shit. It don't. He didn't care if, if if it was with X, if it was his vices, if it was whatever. He wasn't embarrassed to fucking tell you about it. He's gonna tell you about it. 
pray about it in your face. That's the way pimp was. Now, how many? Look now, think about what I just said to y'all, and and really think how many of them we got in the game right now. <laughs> how many niggas in the game like that right now? Like a pimp C or DMX? Just I, don't worry, I will wait. <laughs> I know. You know what's wild? Yeah. You know what's crazy is that a lot of people were saying, especially in this today's era, they were like, "Man, we wish we want Pimp C back." I'm like, "Man, y'all can't even handle Boosie. Y'all want Pimp?" Man, they wouldn't know <laughs> what to do. With pimp, right? You ain't lying. <laughs> that monkey shit, Boosie doing that. That ain't shit compared to what Pimp will be out this motherfucker doing. <laughs> I ain't bullshitting. Pimp will be them put Boosie on blast a couple times for some monkey shit. Because he don't care. He's going to tell you the truth. When something monkey is monkey. If you did something monkey, that's monkey. Man, don't do that shit. Boy, especially when that nigga said Bupac. Y'all don't know how much pimp love Tupac. Pimp almost ain't do right. big pimping because of Tupac. And he ain't even know Pac like that. You know what I'm saying? But he loved Tupac. He loved his music, the message. You know what I'm saying? He knew Pac stood on what he said. So, yeah, boy, I'm telling y'all straight from my, I don't give a fuck who hear it. He would have told Boosie, man, don't do that. Don't name that album that. Don't do it. I don't care how bad you think you're the only one uh, uh, rapping like, you know, that or giving that kind of music right now. You're not that. You know what I'm saying? So don't name That's like me. I can say I'm the protege of Pimp C all I want. I would never put out an album that say Pimp C, like my name Pimp C on that motherfucker. It's just a bad move. It's a monkey. But see how I say that? And y'all will go, ooh, 17. But y'all on the phone, and y'all like, he ain't talking bad about Boosie. He fuck with Boosie. He's just saying that wasn't a good move. Right, right. The thing right. Take this shit and say, oh, man, he's trying to clown Boosie. He was clout chasing. No, I'm telling y'all what I know Pimp would have said. Like, I know it. And anybody who know him and love him know Pimp would have been like, nah, I don't think that's a good move. Like, it's just it's that- shit like that. That keeps 17 yeah. in trouble because I say the fucking truth. What the fuck is the big deal? I said the truth, nigga. You mad? You you get If you get angry, that that ain't even angry, nigga. You pussy. If your feelings get hurt that, that easy, nigga, we just get your box of tampons and get the fuck on away from us. And you know, one thing about it, uh, I guess as we close it out, 17, that's real, man, because one thing about it is a lot of times in this society, in terms of where hip-hop is set up right now, if you tell the truth about something, that's considered hating. If that's your man, you know, you're supposed to just let him do what he does. I'm like, no, friends and nah, brothers and family. Yeah, yeah, ain't they, no, they if, they you, if, if, you, if you really, if that's really your partner or you really fuck yeah. with that person, you ain't finna sit around and just say yes to everything they do because the shit might be monkey. Exactly. Exactly. Who and the fuck was around the fuck. that man that let him do that shit and let it be monkey? Nothing but a bunch of yes men. What I'm telling y'all right. is if Pimp was here, no, Pimp wasn't no yes man. He'd have told him, hey, don't do that. That's not a good idea. Right. You know what I'm saying? Happy. Like, that's not hating. That's not hating. That's telling you, you know what I'm saying? He's helping you. Don't do that. That ain't a good idea. How is that hating? The man telling you, you don't fuck with stuff that's, if you if you want to do a salute to Pac, whatever, you had already did it with the letter, what was it, a uh, letter to Tupac? Yeah. Yeah, you had already did it. That shit was tight. You know what I'm saying? That's how you do it. You don't want to do that right there. You don't want to take it to man, that man. level. And Pip would have would have stopped it because even though he ain't had nothing to do with what Boosie and them got going on, Trill Entertainment paid him $190,000 to present Boosie and Webby. Yeah, man, 17, Pimp C presented 17. No, nah, man, I ain't, he gave me all my money back. He just presented it. So who he really presented? Boosie and Webby are 17. They still owed him $90,000 when he died. What's wrong? A little too much truth for y'all? Oh, no, no, we just listen. So, man. <laughs> <laughs> little too much truth for y'all. No, we were just soaking it in, man. 
Mr. Mill, y'all niggas know y'all owe my nigga $90,000 when he passed away. That was the deal. He was supposed to get one hundred ninety grand for Pimp C Presents just to just to put his name on that hoe to help them little niggas out. So he got a hundred up front. He still owed him ninety. So why would he not tell? But hey, don't do that because that shit is tied to my name. That's how I know he would have told him. See, I'm telling you, it's a, like I told y'all. This shit way deeper. Then what y'all thinking, man? This shit way deeper than what y'all see. This shit way deeper than what y'all hear. It's it's way deeper. It's so much fuck shit in in uh man, I ain't got time for it. So what I do is I just mash the gas, keep on going forward, make sure my nigga name is is held up in the right regard. I ain't got time for nobody else. Nobody else, man. Right with you on that, man. Under under ten percent, ten toes down, man. Like anytime you need to chop, want to chop it up with us, man. We definitely free and open, man. Oh, man, y'all know me, man. I be in my in my own little lane. You reach out to me, I will let you. But I don't. I just don't, man. I don't really do. I don't really do interviews or, or none of that. But I guess it's uh, you know. I don't know. I might have to change it because shit's so fucked up that right. if I don't. Go on different outlets. I guess the truth just never gone. See, I was sitting back like, okay, somebody else gonna say something. I ain't gonna have to be the one to do whatever. But over these past fourteen years, I didn't seen. Now, if I don't say it, it don't get fixed. Like, and that's a lot of weight on a little nigga like me shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. I need. Can I get some backup? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. y'all niggas know. Y'all niggas know. Pimp wouldn't have went for this. Y'all know this wrong. Y'all know this wrong. Y'all know this wrong. Like, now, you got so many people that won't say what's wrong because they involved in it and they greedy ass is getting some kind of little penny off of whatever they twisted and turned. So they, they, they really can't say it's wrong, even though they know it's wrong. That's why I said, man, it's just a lot. Do y'all own research, man. I don't want to sit here. You know, only on this interview and just be telling everybody, well, man, just look into that shit a little more deeper, man. Look into everything right. that happened with Pimpy after he died with his music, with 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 his property, with his cars, with his jewelry, with everything. Look into all that shit. Do your own research. And you, <laughs> yeah, you're going to see why some team like, man, fuck a Bun B and fuck a Corey Moe. And fuck a Shinar. you but y'all will see. Just like when you read the book, you probably seen. Oh, okay, this is what seventeen talking about. Like, yeah, man. Only thing is, other people reading it or looking at it, and I lived it. So, of course, my opinion and my feelings are going to be stronger. Mm-hmm. Like, this this would get me, and then we getting the fuck off here. Because I need to say this. I don't never say this shit, and I can't never get it off. And so niggas don't understand me. But, hey, man, you a bitch-ass nigga if you don't understand me after I explain this. All right. Imagine this, man. UGK was my favorite group ever. Pimp C was my favorite rapper. UGK was my favorite group. But it was because of Pimp C. So I finally get to Pimp C, right? I'm going to buy me a mm-hmm. feature. I'm just trying to go spend my little money, get my feet and go home. The man hit me. He, I, I was too nervous to even rap in front of him that first night. So I gave him his money. He wanted to hear me rap so bad, he made me miss my flight the next day, go to Port Arthur with him, see his parole officer, and took me to the studio. Soon as I dropped my verses on True Story, the nigga gave me all my money back and told me I was with him. Okay, so right there, my mind just blown. I shit, in my mind, I made it. I ain't yeah, I wouldn't worry about no Sony Universal, none of that shit. What you say, nigga? I'm with you. Nigga, that's t- for me, that was better than any Sony Sony Universal, Warner Brothers, any of that nigga. I'm with my motherfucking music, you know, my idol as far as this music shit go. Okay. So then he moves me in with him. 
when I get there, what I just told y'all, UGK was my favorite group. It was because mm-hmm. of Pimp C, but that was my favorite group. So how y'all think I felt when I got there and I seen that? Hmm. They always saying, big bro, little bro. What you mean y'all ain't talking? What you mean, bun a bitch? What you mean he a hoe? Yeah. And I'm living with him. The one and only time I ever heard Pimp talk on the phone with Bun. I, I, I was with Pimp. I only had him in my life 11 months. That one conversation I heard him have with him, he said, you a bitch-ass nigga. Nigga, meet me in Port Arthur if you remember how to get here, bitch, and take your jewelry off, and we can go in the backyard. And hung up on the nigga. Pimp had four phones. I think Bun might have had one of the numbers. I don't even know if Bun had any of them after that day. Mm. Them holy 11 months, they did one show as UGK, and that was in Dallas. And they ain't speak to each other the whole time or nothing. We came up on the right side of the stage, but in the middle, fin- middle fingers came up on the left side of the stage. So you got Pimp and UGK records coming up on the right side, Bun and the middle fingers coming up on the left. Them niggas rocked that bitch. Ain't even had to speak to each other. They've been doing it for so long, the chemistry is there. Right. Show over, Bun leave off that side, we leave off the other side. We get home that night. We drove from Dallas that night. We didn't even stay in Dallas. We drove back to Houston. I watched my nigga cry. I watched him shed tears behind Bun. Mm. Then Jeezy come to Houston. We go to the Jeezy concert. Bun happened to be there. Bun, his wife, Jay, and his wife, Pimp, his wife, my little ass, Pimp cousin, Eddie Rabbit. This why the whole Jeezy shit going on. So Jeezy, like, he didn't end the show like niggas normally end the show. He kind of, like, finished the song and just, that nigga left DJ Drama. That shit was funny as a motherfucker. So Jeezy, then boom, exited the building. Bun runs outside and, and is with Jeezy. So we get back to the high rise that night. I'm watching my nigga cry again over Bun. Cause he like, damn nigga, you like everybody know I'm going at this nigga. And even though you want to stay, you know, mutual, you can't stay by my side while we in H Town, nigga. While we in, while we at home. So I'm watching him cry behind him then. So when Pim pass away, yeah, he a power bear. I'm a power bear. Whatever. But what makes y'all feel like? Just because Pimp would have forgave him, y'all know if Pimp would have lived, he would have forgave him. They would have worked it out, and like they always did. But what makes you think I have to, homie? I'm not Pimp. I ain't grow up with you. All I know is you hurting a nigga I love. So what would you do if somebody was hurting a nigga you love, nigga? What would you do if somebody was hurting the nigga who saved your life? What would you do if somebody was hurting the nigga that that? Yeah, you love this nigga like your brother. What would you do? I'm not supposed you know, to like him. I'm right. not supposed to like Bun. I'm not supposed to forgive him. Okay, now, that's just pimp. That ain't including his tears. I had to watch Mama West cry over the fuck-ass shit he was doing. Mama West could still book shows for Bun after pimp passed away. Bun wouldn't take no shows that Mama West booked because she would get 10%. He ain't want to make no money off him. But you lived Ooh. with her, nigga. She managed y'all for 17 years. You know how many times I had to wipe tears from her face? And y'all think I'm supposed to forgive this nigga or think something about this nigga? So nigga, if y'all don't I'm, understand I'm why I don't like that nigga, right why I don't respect that nigga, hold up. If y'all don't understand why I don't like that nigga, why I don't right. respect that nigga, and why I don't have to, then you's a bitch-ass nigga. I know how to separate Dude. the man from the music. I know how to separate the man from the artist. If I want to go listen to a right. Bun B song I like, I'll listen to that bitch. But i never give right. him no respect as a man. Nigga, you a hoe to me. And if you can't understand what the fuck I just said, then you's a bitch-ass nigga. Ain't no loyalty in you. You know... I'm not even 
in a circle like that, and that shit hurts me to hear because UGK was one of the greatest groups ever, but no doubt. Seventeen. How, how many seventeen? How many times do we see this? How many times have we seen? Because you're a student of the game and the culture as much as we are. Um, how many times have we seen this in the industry where you have these these rifts between longtime friends and and then mm-hmm. family and other friends get brought into this and then it's it's mm-hmm. just torn to shreds where there's just no resolve from it. I mean, all all the time. That's why I be looking at people and I'm like. Oh, y'all just can't believe it, huh? Y'all just can't believe it. this shit happen all the time, but y'all just can't believe it, huh? Like, obviously y'all ain't read the book. Obviously y'all ain't seen the letters that was wrote in my big bro own handwriting. Like, yeah, you ready? You just don't want to face it. You don't want to admit it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, I'm. I would like for y'all to to answer me. What? <laughs> I just told y'all, man. He hurt the people I love. Hey, right. man, I was down. Pimp C and Mama West. UGK Records belong to Pimp C and Mama West. Right. That's who I was always with. I lived with Pimp. When Pimp passed away, Mama West and Pops can't live with me in Houston. So that's like we family. I have watched you make both of them cry. Not just piss them off. I watch you make both of them shed tears. That shit, it just takes me to another level. So I watch you hurt the people I love, nigga. What in the fuck make people think I need to have love for you for? i like to hear y'all response. What, would, what the fuck would y'all do? In the words of Charlie Murphy, 17, that's called habitual line stuffing. You know, when you got somebody that does that repeatedly, um, <laughs> you have the you have the absolute right to feel the way that you do with everything that you said and what transpired because this is something that um, it, it only I can only say this just from being a spectator. And that's all I will say as a spectator is that it should have never come to that in terms of what happened with Pimp and Bun. That should have never come. It, it should was, have never like happened I said, like, like that. Like I said, that's just unfortunate that we lost Big Bro because I said this over and over. If he would have lived, right. they would have they would have straightened it out. They hadn't been in little fusses their whole career. So don't get right. it twisted. You know, they would have straightened it out. I just hate when Bun try and run, run with that narrative that, oh, we had just patched it up. No, they, he know better. He know better, mm-hmm. and he know that Seventeen and Shannara and and Ed and Mama West is the only ones that really and well in the whole UGK Records Pimp Crew is the only ones that that can really come out and say, "Nah, he lying." But nobody would do that besides Seventeen. Mama West is gone. Pops is gone. I repeat, gone. Bitch is gone. Ain't nothing but a couple of us left that was down with Pimp. Seventeen is the one who gon' yeah he don't give fuck nothing about you. You gotta understand he's a Leo, grew up in PA with Bun, so he has a different connection with him. Big Bub is from Beaumont, NPA. He knew Bun in the streets growing up. They they got different connections with them. I, no, all I knew was Pimp, so I can look at it from a a different point of view. I can look at it from now. I just no, all I know is that's the nigga that hurt the people I love. So fuck him and everything he stand for. And if you can't understand that, you a bitch-ass nigga with no loyalty. I am very fucking loyal. So if you want to crucify me for that, I gladly take it. Yeah, fuck him and everything he stand for. Like, I'm going to leave y'all with this, man, and I'm going to go. Y'all better chop. I, I didn't gave y'all some game, man, that y'all could chop up and just play that shit over and over at certain parts, and it's so much truth, you would fuck niggas' heads up. I'm going to give you one hey, more. I'm taking up the book tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, Look, up this book I'm giving tomorrow. you one more. I'm giving you one more, mm-hmm. and then y'all tell me the answer, and then we, we getting off the phone. Got you. Why? Why? I don't give a fuck if y'all wasn't speaking whatever the fuck was going on. When Bun came to the high-rise the day that, you know, 
because we all woke up that morning. Shannara asked me if, if she was like, Chad, text you or call you? I was like, no. I, you? She was like, no. She asked Ed. Ed was like, no. Right then we knew something was wrong. I, one of us three, was in. he was in constant contact with and his mama. So when she said that, I went out on the patio because mind y'all, Shannara and his mama didn't get along. They didn't talk. So I went, I went out on the patio. I called Mama Wes. Mama, you heard from Pimp? No, baby, I ain't heard from him. I'm worried. For the first time, he hadn't called her uh, at night. I come back in. Shannara's on the phone with the Mondrian. That's when we found out that, you know, they went up there and found him. Okay. So, fuck, I had to buy her ticket. I had to buy Shannara ticket, matter of fact. So, we leave that evening, nigga. Red Boy and Bun picks us up from the high rise. Do y'all know that was Bun first time ever in that high rise? We had a studio in that high rise. That was his first time in there. I'll never forget when he walked in. Me and Ed getting our bags and shit, and he was like, "Yeah, it's nice, man. I ain't never been in here." And I'm just looking at the back of his head, like, "What the fuck he doing here?" So, but they came to bring us to the airport. So I'm thinking we all going, right? Why you drop us off? We get to the airport. We get out. We going to get on the flight. Bun called me, 17. I put my bag down, walked to the back of his truck with him. He asked me, hey, man, Chad had been fucking around, man. Just let me know, bro. Man, I remember just looking at that nigga. He meant fucking with his nose. I remember just looking at that nigga. I said, yeah, but you should know that. And I just picked up my bags and left. Because that's supposed to be your brother, right? That's supposed to be this and that, nigga. You, you got to call me, the new nigga, to ask? And you ain't coming with us? Why Why am I the one who had to go in the room and, and see that blood and that mucus on that bed to get my big bro stuff out? Why am I the one who had to go to the, uh, the corner and identify the body? Why Bun wasn't there? Why he ain't come? Why he, why his eyes ain't ain't see what mine had to see? Huh? Right. Y'all niggas quiet as a motherfucker. Man, now we hear stuff like this. We just listen. Um, it's the fucking you know, truth. So before yeah. you judge me, you do anything, nigga, you don't know what the fuck my eyes seen, nigga. You don't know what the truth is, bitch. Yeah. Answer them questions I just asked you, and if you can come up with a fucking good answer that makes sense, I'll listen in. But until then, man, fuck all them motherfuckers and what they stand for. It's long live Pip Chad, rest in peace, Mama West, and fuck the rest of them niggas. Now who gonna do me what? You can't under Man. if you can't understand seventeen now, then fuck you. Now y'all take that shit and splice it up in a uh yeah, put that in their face. Cause I don't like doing interviews and I don't wanna say this shit no more. Hey, we hey, we hey, look. It, we look, when we post this, and we will. We're just gonna leave it as is, like we always do. Because obviously, this is some stuff that needs to be put out there in terms of people really need to know to really understand this. Important I don't concept. like doing interviews. If you ain't gonna put it out there, well, every for the world can hear the shit. Don't even put this shit out. Because I don't like doing interviews, and I do not want to have to do it again. I already told y'all every fucking thing you can want to. Who who got questions? Who wanted to know what? I just answered all that shit. Definitely, man. We definitely going to have everything out there. And I'm going to check in with you, man. I'm going to send you the, the the interview after we get off the phone. Let you go over it. Yeah, man, just send that to me because I don't do interviews. So the ones I do, I keep. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely gonna, we definitely going to go over it and... As soon as we put it out on YouTube, I'm going I'm to ask you about the t- how you want to title it and everything, and we could just go from there. Homie, I don't ask me nothing, man. Y'all do what y'all do. 
Y'all, you, you told uh, me a couple minutes ago y'all pride yourself on journalism, right? Y'all pride yourself on, yes, on getting the truth out there, right? Yes, Man, I just gave y'all more truth than you ever going to get. I can put my hand on the Bible and tell y'all that. I just gave y'all more truth than y'all ever going to get. Now, if y'all don't splice that shit up and put it out there like it's supposed to be and send it to other media fucking say they're getting it from y'all so they can't say they reported on it first, you better get that shit to the people the way it's supposed to get to them. I, I, I ain't telling you how to title nothing. You know what to do. Y'all know how to do it. I don't know. I don't know nothing about the shit. You just Say make no sure more. it's heard. Good. Say no more. Understood. Make sure it's heard so they fucking know. Say no more, man. Do it. Thank you for joining us, man. I'm gonna send that to you as soon as this thing process. And keep put, keep hitting them over the head and keep representing Pimp's legacy, bro. We behind you. Already, homie. Y'all keep pushing. Yes, sir. Be safe out there. Be blessed. Thanks again.